How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds. And this time around, I am going to go into detail and break down exactly what a salamander is to not only provide a better understanding, but also an appreciation for what these animals are. And I think this video would be especially helpful to those who don't know too much about these animals or to those who may be entering the hobby for the first time. So if you enjoy the video, please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, and of course, please subscribe. Your support is very much appreciated. And don't forget to check out the description below for the links to the Salamander Wild's official Facebook page, Instagram, and Discord. So what exactly is a salamander? At first glance, you might think it's some sort of reptile, perhaps a lizard. They seem to crawl on all fours with a tail, just like a lizard. And yet, salamanders live completely different lifestyles. They have different requirements altogether because they are not lizards or reptiles at all. They are, in fact, amphibians, just like frogs. And that perhaps is the simple answer, but let's take this further and break down really what makes these animals so different from reptiles. Salamanders are tailed amphibians and are members of the order Caudata. This order not only consists of salamanders, but also newts. Salamanders can also be either terrestrial or aquatic, or perhaps semi-aquatic. Many species also have multiple life stages, and the habitat in which they live can change due to their life stage. As an example, the orange newt shown here, the eastern newt, goes through multiple life stages, starting out as an aquatic feathery gilled larva, and then transitioning to the terrestrial red eft as shown here, and then eventually maturing into the olive greenish adult who then changes to an aquatic habitat, the eastern newt alone goes through three different life stages and can either become terrestrial or aquatic depending on which one it is currently living through. In a similar fashion, the spotted salamander goes through two different life stages. The aquatic feathery gilled larva, and then over time, the larva will mature, losing the feathery gills and paddle-like tail that once made it suitable for water, and then morph into the yellow-spotted terrestrial salamander shown above. Then, there are salamanders that are considered semi-aquatic. These salamanders depend on cool, flowing streams or springs in order to survive, from the moment of birth and into adulthood. For example, the northern dusky salamander and the two-line salamander shown here are both lungless, stream-dwelling salamanders. They both lay their eggs under rocks or in streams where the larva will hatch as aquatic feathery gilled salamanders. This aquatic stage of life will depend on well oxygenated, cool flowing streams until they morph, losing their paddle like tail and feathery gills, eventually becoming the slender salamanders shown here. And because both of these salamanders are lungless, they depend on the moisture to breathe through their skin, and so they will not wander too far off from their aquatic habitat. Then there are salamanders that are completely terrestrial from the moment of birth, from the moment that they hatch from an egg and all the way into adulthood. An example of such a salamander would be the one shown here, the slimy salamander. This salamander is also a lungless salamander, meaning that it breathes through its skin, so even its terrestrial habitat must be cool and moist. Some salamanders are also completely aquatic from the moment of birth and all the way into adulthood. And one very well-known salamander, of course, is the axolotl. Axolotls are neotenic salamanders, meaning they keep their larval traits into adulthood. Larval features include external feathery gills and a paddle-like tail, things that make them suitable for an aquatic environment. Many salamanders and newts end up losing these features as they grow and mature, just like the eastern newt once it morphs into the terrestrial red eft. However, some populations 
can also be neotenic for a period of time. And perhaps an even better comparison, spotted salamanders as they are in the same genus as the axolotl. And this is what makes the axolotl different, being able to mature and breed while retaining these features. Salamanders are also found all over the world, mainly in temperate climates accompanied by cool, moist environments. Although, there are a small number of salamanders that occur in tropical regions. With that said, most salamanders are found away from the heat and out of the sun, which is totally opposite from a lizard. These animals rely on moisture in order to survive. Due to this, many salamanders are found in cool flowing streams or ponds, and they also rely on rainy, wet conditions for their breeding season as well. Breeding season also takes place from late winter to early spring for many salamanders. This is a period of time where the temperatures through winter are just starting to warm and the rains are also stirring up these salamanders to make massive migrations to their vernal pool breeding grounds. So cooler temperatures and wet conditions play a major role in the lives of many newts and salamanders. Many newts and salamanders also have bright coloration, which are warning signs that these animals contain toxins. The poison that they produce is secreted through their skin as a defense mechanism towards any predators that try to get a mouthful of these animals. The potency of the toxins varies from species to species, some only leaving a bad taste in the predator that tries to eat them, but others can also be fatal, although some animals will still prey on salamanders. So what is a salamander? Salamanders are a vibrant, diverse array of tailed amphibians. They are hunters and predators, even if they seem clumsy, as they crawl along the forest floor or swim at the bottom of a stream or pond. They lead secretive lives out of sight, out of mind, away from the prying eyes of people in places that you might not normally look. They are mysterious creatures and wonderful creatures that are absolutely captivating. From the eastern newt to the Japanese giant salamander, these amphibians are all a part of the salamander wilds. <laughs>